Steve, as we all know that company culture is very important these days, but uh, uh, you also mentioned in your LinkedIn profile that gratitude is important, especially for employees because they want to be very engaged and, and that will lead to uh, productivity. So can you tell us more about the gratitude, uh, what tips you can give to employers and why it's important? Yeah, let's talk just maybe a little bit of step back and look at context for it and why gratitude is you know, so important. Yesterday, you know, remember we talked about how our brains are just so hyper-focused on negative and, and challenges. And when we get there, it, draw, it shuts down the executive function of our brain and it gets us in a, you know, in a, in a poor emotional state. I've never heard culture described as a place where people really are, don't like each other. Like in a, when you talk about that negative emotional state, that is never the ideal culture, right? So if we want to manifest and bring about a positive, productive, engaged culture, the mindset that we have, the way in which our leaders and our people look at the world and make sense of the world, mm -hmm. it, um, it, it needs to have that positive mindset. And, um, you know, Martin Seligman, he is the you know, founder of positive psychology, he has a model for human flourishing, um, and it's called PERMA. In it, there are 24 positive character strengths, you know, things like hope, courage, love of learning, leadership, these types of things. And, and um, you know, I joke and say, 24, how do you work on 24 things to, you know, create a positive culture? And, you know, because really culture begins with one individual, doesn't it? and one individual and another and another and another. Well, fortunately, one of Seligman's colleagues did some research and said, you know, what is the, the number one predictor of living a thriving, flourishing life as Seligman defined it? And, and what he found was that gratitude was the single best predictor of having a thriving, flourishing mindset. And uh, so we turn on the executive function in our brain, we enable the good and the uh, that's around us to be able to notice it. So we deal with the challenges, you know, and the research out there on, on gratitude has, has shown that grateful people are more likely to achieve important life goals, right? So they're more likely to do this, you know, and I, I remember early in my career when I started doing this, some people said, I, I've had people say to me, geez, if I, if I let my employees know I appreciate them, I think they might get complacent and take advantage of it. And, uh, and people kind of laugh at that today, but still, that's a fear-based response, right? To think, oh, if I give something, they're going to take advantage of me, but it's a fear-based response. And science says, no, it's not true. And, and what we know is that when we're grateful, we become other-focused. And when I say other, we, we take the focus from me to others. And so if you think, if you're in the service business, if you're in any business where you have customers, where do you want your employees focused on themselves or others like your, your customers, right? So gratitude is this emotion that when you experience it, it makes you aware and gets you focused on others, which is, you know, gratitude's kind of called the, the social, um, the, the social emotion because it binds us together as human beings because it re recognizes the interconnections that we have with each other. And, and even you and I, completely different sides of the country. And we happen to just connect from, you know, just by this thin thread. And here we are having these conversations over these five days. So we're really important for culture. How do you think, you have worked with a lot of HR professionals. My question is, as a follow up, how the gratitude can be implemented in the recruitment part or during the, the interview part? Have you seen Perfect. anything that you can share with us? Yeah, here's some things that you can do is that you can ask questions about, you know, somebody's success. Tell us about the successes you've had in your career. And, and you can listen for a couple things. Um, people can talk about themselves and everything they've done. Or people can talk or and or mm -hmm. they can talk about <coughs> the people who have been there to help them achieve the successes that they've been a part of. And, you know, someone who's willing to talk about all the people that were there or whatever it is, mm -hmm. systems and great organizations that they've been a part of to help them achieve their successes, just without indirect, without directly saying, are you grateful? You're going to get some insights into what 
somebody uh, what what what's what you know, really how they think and 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 and, uh, and and assess their own success. Now, in an interview situation, mm -hmm. I'm going to want to impress you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to want to tell you that it was because I want you to hire me, right? Yes. And so you might want to just do a follow-up question like, well, when you think of the people that were there to support you through that, or, you know, or, or who else might you give credit to some of your success, that success you just told us about, and, and, and tell us a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see how quick that someone is to, to do that. And I mean, you do that on the recruitment side. You know, gratitude's like going to the gym. Like we have these, I think we got these gratitude muscles in our brains, but we got to use them all the time. And so HR professionals at work, you know, one of the things you can do in the workplace to be able to strengthen your ability to be grateful. So you see more of the positive, more of the good. So you continue to work on your culture. Every time you have a meeting, start the meeting, share one thing you're grateful for. Just go around the table or around the Zoom room, whatever you're doing, <laughs> And just share one thing you're grateful for and you mix it up maybe the next time you say okay i'm, I'm grateful for mahar for this and then just everyone you don't pick anyone twice you just go around the room and then mahar you would pick someone else and they would pick someone else and talk about what they're grateful for about a team member real positive simple exercise you can do and another follow i want to ask in regard to company cultures a lot of times when recruiters uh meet a candidate or and then they send a you're great we like you but uh we are speaking with another person or culturally uh, culturally do you believe in the in the in the, my question is do you believe in company culture are pp people add company into cultures or they should be aligned with the company culture you know it, it's you know when when i join a company uh, when you join a company uh, or when you have a customer, this idea of uh, th there needs to be some sort of alignment there mm -hmm. in, in, because if, if there is a fundamental disconnect between what, uh, you know, uh, an, um, an employer believes and what uh, a job seeker believes, if those aren't aligned, we're, we're setting both up. For, for failure in the long run, right? Because it's not gonna last in the long run if there's this fundamental disconnect between the two. So I, I really think it's important that there's alignment right at the front end. And it's not worth just taking a job just to get a job, you know, Ed, yeah. if you don't have alignment. Yeah. Thank you for sharing with that with me, Steve. And again, for the audience watching, if you have any other tips in terms of company culture, alignment, or gratitude, please leave it in the comment section. Like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and tune in tomorrow for another question with Steve. Thanks.